Okay, here are some more examples from section 1.4. On example 5, it says a deli offers six different toppings. How many different choices of two toppings are there? Well, we have six things to choose from, and we're choosing two of them at a time. So that's either going to be combinations or permutations of six things taken two at a time. It's also combinations or permutations because it's different choices. We can't repeat the same choice. So if there's six choices for the first one, so let me just write this down here. If we have six choices for the first option, then we only have five choices for the next one. Now you might say, well, that's 30. But that's saying that, that the order matters. For example, when you do 6 times 5 here, again, it's 6 times 5 because there's 6 uh, different toppings, and you have to have different choices for the two toppings. So if you choose mayonnaise here or lettuce here, you can't choose lettuce again. So uh, that would be 6 times 5, not 6 times 6. If you could choose, do the same one twice, it would be 6 times 6 choices, 36. But still, 30 isn't right because that assumes that there's a difference between, let's say, ketchup mustard and mustard ketchup. But when you put ketchup mustard on or mustard ketchup on, it doesn't matter the order. They get smashed together. So in this case, order doesn't matter. So since there's two options for each, two. And 30 divided by 2 is 15. But you can do this on the binomial Excel sheet by just realizing, well, it's, it's a combination or a permutation, you know, realizing it's one of those. And then when you realize that order doesn't matter, then that means it is a combination. Combination lock, order matters. But a combination in statistics is when order doesn't matter. So the combination of six things taken at two at a time, you do right here. I'm on the binomial sheet. And it's six things taken two at a time, and we get 15. And that's the answer to that problem. Okay, so now for the uh, next problem, let's get this up here. The next problem says, how many handshakes are required for seven people to shake everyone's hand? Well, your N is seven, and it takes two people to shake hands. So you could say, like, you got three people, person A, B, and C. So... A shakes B, A shakes C. B sh doesn't need to shake person A's hands because A already shook person B's hands. So there would be, if you're talking three people, for example, it would be A, B, it would be A, C, and it would be uh, B, C. See, that's all you have with that. You wouldn't need to do B, A because they already shook hands. So again, order doesn't matter. I don't, you don't have to shake my hand if I shake your hand. So there's seven things taken two at a time. So just do that right on the exact same place. Seven things taken two at a time and you get 21. Okay. Um, the next one here says, what is the probability of winning Mega Millions jackpot? In Mega Millions, five different numbers, again, different numbers, are randomly selected from 1 to 56. Well, right there, that gives you the combination of 56 things taken five at a time. So I'll do that on the Excel sheet right here. Combination of 56 things taken five at a time. Now you can see that's a rather big number there. I think it's 3,819,816. But there's more to this problem. It says, so again, you have to have uh, five different numbers, randomly selected from one to 56, and one number, one to 46. So that there's 46 different options for that other number. So in other words, I have to take the 46 times that number right that we got on the uh, Excel sheet right here. So that number, I need to multiply it by 46. Now you can do it on a calculator if you want, but I can do it here as well. I can do equals 46 times, and you can either type in that number or I can just click on it. And so that's what that number is right there. Okay, now our answer to the problem, though, is the probability that you hit that number. Well, you're on one ticket, so one out of that number. So the answer would be one out of that number right there. So we would say, here, I'll copy this a second. So, well, here, I'll just write it here. So we would type in um, one out of that number right there. And that is going to be a very small number. 
it looks like zero, but it really isn't. Uh, I'll format the cell and show you that it is a very, very small number. Uh, let's let's go out a good many digits, and you can see that there you go. It's like point a whole bunch of zeros. In fact, we could show it in scientific notation here. Let's format the cell and see if we can show it in scientific notation. So this means 5.69 times 10. This capital E means times 10 to the negative ninth. In other words, move to the decimal point nine places to the left. It would be point eight zeros, zero 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 zero, and then five six nine. So very very small probability. And what people usually forget on that problem is uh, doing the one over as it's shown right here, one over that number right there. So once you get that number, it's just one over that number, and you get that by doing 46, 46 times a combination of 56, taking five at a time. Okay, and uh, that takes us to uh, these harder problems here. So in this problem, it says this is example 10 from 1.3, but now we're going to solve them with combinations and permutations. And actually, there's an extra area that says hypergeometric combinations and permutations. So on this problem, it was originally on section 1.3. It says there's five people from Arizona, seven from California, three from Nevada. There are three job openings for three different people. What is the probability that, first of all, it says all three are from California? Now, the way we did this back on... Um, back on section 1-3 is we said well there's seven from California and the total number of people let me get the total the total is 15 see five and seven and three add up to 15 people so we did seven out of 15 then that person had a job then we're down to six out of 14 and five out of 13 but doing it with combinations we would just say we would get all the ways that I could choose three people from the seven people from California out of all the ways I could choose three people from the entire 15 people. So you could do it with two separate combinations. You could do that on the combinations area of the binomial sheet. Sorry, that's right here. Like we could do uh, 7, 3 and get 35. Then do 15, 3 and get 455. And then you divide those two numbers. You take 35 divided by 455. But there's an easier way to do that, and that's using the hypergeometric combinations area. And that's right below uh, where we were on the binomial sheet. So I'll show you that. Right here, see you have combinations and permutations. Well, here you have hypergeometric combinations and hypergeometric permutations. This is for doing multiple combinations and permutations. So we have to do combinations because order doesn't matter on this. We don't care if the three people from California is person A, B, C, or B, C, A. So the total population size was 15 people. We're drawing out a sample size of three people. And the number of, uh, we're looking for three people from California. How many people did we have from California in our population? Well, looking at that, there was seven people from California. So that's why this needs to be a seven. And how many of those people needed to be from California? Well, all three of them. And you get the exact same answer. And most people find this to be the easiest way to do these problems right here. Let's take a look at the next one. And the next one says, uh, on part two, it says, the first one is selected and the last is from California. So you can see that the order is specified. So when the order is specified, the order matters, so we have to do permutations. Now doing it with multiple permutations, we'd have to do all the ways that we could choose uh, two people from Nevada out of the three people that are from Nevada, then times all the ways that we can choose one person from California out of the seven people from California, divide that by all the ways we can choose three people from the 15 people. So you could do that in pieces or you could just do it on the hypergeometric permutation area. So that's right here. The population size again is 15 people. We're taking three people from these 15. Now let's call the first group that we're dealing with Nevada. Well on the problem how many people are from Nevada? Well, looking at the original problem, it says that there are three people from Nevada, and we want two of them. So this needs to be a three, 
and the successes in the sample were we need two um, that from Nevada. See, there's three people from Nevada, and we need two of them. And what else did we need? Well, it says that one is from California. Now we have seven people total from California. It's stated right there, seven people from California. And we need one of them. So we just say, now from the next population, which has seven in it, seven people from California, we need one. And that would be the answer to that problem. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. And on the next one, we have two are from Nevada and one is from California. So here the order is not specified. So you use the exact same numbers, but you plug them into the hypergeometric combinations area. So right here, you would do the exact same numbers as what we have there. And you can see that this answer here is actually three times bigger than this one because there's three different ways that you could have had two people from Nevada and one from California. Let's go on to the next one. Each is from a different state. So let's take a look at that. Each is from a different state. Order wasn't really specified there. So order doesn't matter. We're having 15 people total. There's three people in my sample size. There's three people from Nevada, and I need one of them. There's seven people from California, and I need one of them. And then the problem is says there's five people from Arizona, and I need one of them. And there's your answer to that problem. And I think that's about it with that particular example. Going to example nine, it says at a particular college there's a total of 75 teachers. And this is the exact same thing, and you can see here how to do it as what we did above. It's just larger numbers, so you definitely would not want to do this any other way than using these hypergeometric combinations and permutations area. So I'll let you go through example nine yourself. It's really uh, the same thing as example eight. And then just a, a few leftover problems here. On example 10, it says a contractor needs four trees in a straight line. How many distinguishable ways can the trees be planted? Well, distinguishable permutations is what we're talking about here. So if you add these up, 5, 9, and 6, it adds up to 20. So there's 20 factorial ways that you could arrange these trees. You know, you got 20 trees, you have any one of 20 trees for the first tree, then 19 for the next, then 18, and you can multiply all those together, and that would be 20 factorial. But some of those are duplicates. For example, if you have an uh, an oak tree, an oak tree, and an oak tree, it doesn't matter which of those three oak trees come first. They're not indistinguishable. So what you do is you take your total factorial, say 20 factorial, and you divide that by each of the separate factorials. Well, instead of doing all these factorials, you can do them on the distinguishable permutation area, which again is on the binomial sheet. So right here is distinguishable permutations. You put in your total population size right here, which was 20. And then down here, you put in each of your groups. Like for example, we had, uh, let's see how many oak trees. We had five oak, nine maple, and six poplar. So put five, nine, and six in. So five, nine, six, nine, six, nine, six, nine, have to those trees right there. And I think that's what it says uh, right there on the problem as well. And this is a this one is again another one of these hypergeometric combinations. So I'll let you. Um, uh, see the rest for yourself. Uh, the, the text here should uh, take you through that. So I'll stop right there.